Now that it's official that the Republicans have taken the House, will there be more accountability for Gary Gensler? Time will tell. We'll take a look at some of the comments. The House has already announced a December hearing to investigate the collapse of FTX. This was just announced today, and that came from both sides of the aisle with Ranking Member McHenry and Chairwoman Maxine Waters. We'll take a look at the press release there. And Brad Garlinghouse was speaking today at Ripple Swell, which is happening across the pond, and had a lot of interesting announcements about Ripple's business, a few things from even earlier this week that we really haven't had a chance to touch on, so we'll dive into that in a little more detail. But if we haven't met before, my name is Frank Joe. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. All right, we looked at some of the comments from Tom Emmer yesterday, but now with the majority, he says that they are going to rein in wasteful spending and politicized regulatory enforcement. I think we have some ideas of where that has come into play and hold bureaucrats accountable. And I think he's speaking specifically to Gary Gensler, who he has been calling out by name for some time. So let's keep our ears to the ground as far as what's going to be happening there. I, of course, will keep you up to date whenever we hear anything, especially as it pertains to the SEC and some real accountability there. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, Patrick McHenry is currently the ranking member, but with the Republicans taking over the House, it looks as if he will become the chairman uh, when it starts with the new cycle here coming into 2023 with all the new representatives in. But as of now, again, he's ranking member, so he's the leader of the minority party. Chairwoman Maxine Waters still in power there, but they have come out with a statement together announcing a bipartisan hearing into the collapse of FTX and the broader consequences for the digital asset ecosystem. In December, the committee expects to hear from the companies and individuals involved, including SBF, Alameda Research, Binance, FTX, and related entities, among others. Here's the quote from Ranking Member McHenry. Chairwoman Waters and I are announcing a Financial Services Committee hearing on the FTX debacle. Oversight is one of Congress's most critical functions, and we must get to the bottom of this for FTX's customers and the American people. It is essential that we hold bad actors accountable so responsible players can harness technology to build a more inclusive financial system. I appreciate Chairwoman Waters' is working with Republicans to deliver accountability through a bipartisan process. Now, on the other side, Chairwoman Waters said the fall of FTX has posed tremendous harm to over 1 million users, many of whom were everyday people who invested their hard-earned savings into the FTX crypto exchange, only to watch it all disappear within a matter of seconds. Unfortunately, this event is just one out of the many examples of crypto platforms that have collapsed this past year. That's why it is with great urgency that I, along with my colleague, Ranking Member McHenry, announced the committee's intention to hold a hearing. As chairwoman, I've led the effort in examining and investigating the digital assets marketplace and know that we need legislative action to ensure that digital asset entities cannot operate in the shadows outside of robust federal oversight and clear rules of the road. I look forward to holding this important hearing and uncovering all that Congress must do to ensure that this never happens again. Well, it should have happened in the first place. We should have learned from even Celsius and Voyager earlier in the year from Terra Luna, but the House didn't act appropriately then. Now they really need to step up and put some real work into getting the legislation passed rather than just talking about it and hoping that somebody else will take up this responsibility. Now, just a quick reminder before we get into the Ripple news, 20% off everything in the merch store through the 20th still going on. I'll link it in the video description. Brad Garlinghouse at the sixth annual Ripple Swell took the stage to discuss all things Ripple, crypto utility, macroeconomic factors affecting crypto, and much more. So here's what he had to say. With everything that's been happening 
in the past few weeks and over the course of this year's many ups and downs, it feels even more imperative that we've gathered to have honest conversations about solving real world problems with crypto and blockchain. As I said on stage, says Garlinghouse, I firmly believe that crypto will be stronger because of this. If we keep focusing on transparency and trust, Ripple has and will continue to lead in this regard. On a positive note, we have made some major announcements this week. We've processed $30 billion in payments on RippleNet, both in fiat and crypto, which is a pretty big milestone and one that should be celebrated. Ripple announced a partnership with MFS Africa to bring ODL to Africa. Now they're six continent. There's an article here you can check out if you're interested in learning more about the ODL partnership there, as well as some of the other things happening globally. I'll link this one in the description if you want to read further. Other announcements and certainly more to come. 40 payout markets are live for ODL, representing 90% of FX markets. And apologies, I showed you the uh, th that article instead of the Africa one, but I have both of them pulled up here, and I'll link them down, both of them, for you to refer to if interested. There's 19 new and upgraded from Fiat ODL customers across the globe, and Liquidity Hub is live and being used to source ETH. Despite headwinds, I'm immensely proud of the Ripple team, he says, who day in and day out focus on helping our customers move value around the world without remittance or whether remittances, individual payments, bulk funding, treasury management, and more. So a lot happening for Ripple as a business as they continue to build despite some of the headwinds that are happening in the crypto space. Again, both of these articles, the one on the expansion into Africa, as well as the expansion of ODL to nearly 40 payout markets will be linked down in the video description. Some really exciting things happening to help shrink the world, help make it easier for money, for value to flow across borders so that people can conduct business as well as provide for their families in a more rapid, efficient, and cost-effective way than they ever have been able to in the past. So a lot of really exciting things happening on that front, despite some of the challenges we have on the exchange side where they just can't seem to get it right. Other negative announcements in the press from Genesis, and of course the downstream impact to Gemini with their EARN program hit the headlines uh, over the last 24 hours as well. So we've certainly had our share of bad news over the past week. But are you still optimistic and bullish on the future of crypto? This may be a short-term shakeout, but are the fundamentals still sound? Is it just the businesses that are trying to play in the space, these exchanges that are centralized, the ones having the problems, or are there any fundamental issues that you're seeing that you have concerns about? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'm always eager to hear what you have to say. I hope you found the information here to be helpful. If you did, drop a like. It helps the channel a ton and helps me keep you informed. Hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on all the latest news. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.